Okay team, today is Cinco de Mayo, and what I should be doing is enjoying delicious tacos and Mexican food, because it is one of my favorites, an absolute favorite. Um, but instead, I feel like crap. So uh, am I up to 100%? No means no. No. Am I still gonna have a good day? Y-E-S, yes. You bet your buttons I am. What I'd like to be doing is curling up in a ball on the couch watching a bunch of movies, but that is not going to happen today. I got an email from a client and they want to make a travel book which is tailored to them. So I'm going through those images making sure that the best of the best are where they need to be and it's straightforward for my designer to actually put them all into place. Which leads me to a question for you. Um, first, do you print your photos? Because if you don't, you should. Two, if you print them, do you prefer to have them in like a four by six, five by seven, um, 10 by 14 or whatever, 11 by 14, whatever it might be, um, so you can put them in frames or would you prefer to have them in a book? Because I've got a couple ideas floating around about creating a new printing service and um, I'd love your input. So do tell me, I'd love to know. Just so you don't get bored because I know I'm pretty boring. All right. And one question I often get is, how do you start to cull down your images? And first, I want to let you know that it is difficult. And when it's my personal life, it's very difficult. You're emotionally connected to the photos and it just, it's different because you're like, oh, my kids look so cute in that photo and that one and that one and that one. And they look, yeah, all the moments are precious. So therefore it's really difficult to cut them down. Whereas in business, it's easier because it's literally if it's good or not and if it tells a story or not. My camera's rolling. I've got sound on me. I'm looping you into the H6 zoom, which is then kicking back up to my camera. And then I've got nice. you on record and then screen <laughs> recording. Amazing. I love technology. Just got off the horn with a buddy of mine, Philip Ammon, who's a great travel photographer. So if you, uh, have a couple moments, take a peek at his stuff on Instagram, take a peek at his website. Um, he just told me he hasn't been very active on Instagram. So get active, buddy. Um, so we chatted about books and creation of content and building photo decks and all sorts of stuff. I won't give you all the details, but we had a great chat. Have a listen. So like, I, I guess the conflict for me is then like deciding with with clients, like do you wanna, do you wanna gift them digital copies of the photos so they can put them on Facebook and social media or do you want to like keep the access kind of like restricted to purchases or I think everybody's got a slightly different business model I think with say like certain wedding photographers they will all the money's up front it's like this is a premium package it's super expensive mm -hmm. but you get the whole kit and caboodle mm -hmm. and there's other photographers that maybe are less on the front end they make all their money on the prints, the edits, and then the books, because they're like, okay, well, we'll edit 25 of your photos. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no way. I'm, I've busted my tail all day or all month or whatever it might be for that particular shoot. I'm not gonna give you 25 edits. That's just bonkers. Yeah, that's insane. For all the effort that you put in to deliver the best you can, I want to get all of my images into the hands of my clients. Mm -hmm. I use something called Smug Mug, which, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of them out there, but I just use Smug Mug because I've used it for years. For the books, to me it doesn't make sense for the, the book to be printed in the U.S. because I am physically in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I want to go into the printing press. I physically want to spot check all the books. I physically want to go touch them. I want to go like make sure that they're right. And so then we ship them, which shipping costs are peanuts. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things because I want to make sure that they're right. I'm, I'm always like, I'm always trying to figure out how am I going to offer something that provides value, but at the same time, like there's always a, a bit left to surprise. And I think that's kind of cool. Like if you can surprise your client with a bit extra, like a photo book or something that they they're not expecting, that's kind of a, a nice little touch. Everybody likes to surprise. And it makes for a great story too, you know. Somebody sees like this awesome photo book at their house and they're like, oh wow, what's this? You know, and then there's a little story element of how it was gifted to them and they were part of this trip or whatever it is. 
the big win is when you feature them as the star character. And then mm-hmm. as they're going through this, say, with their families and family and friends, their grandkids, and they're like, wow, Grandma, you look awesome. Or, Mom, you look awesome in this. That, what a cool experience. And then you're shoulder to shoulder, and you can actually talk about the experience. I'm glad you hit me up, because I think this is actually what needs to be happening. I think creatives need to be connecting with other creatives to figure out where their strong suits are and ha- like where one can help the other. Yeah, for sure. I, I think like like just like I said, like seeing your your um, vlog come along, it's it's been really cool. Like I was like, oh, I didn't even know he does a vlog, and I was like, oh, this must be like the second episode or something. And then... This is what lockdown does. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being in the vlog. Hey, awesome. Thanks. Peace Have a good out. one. Later. Bye. That right there is case in point on why you should call your friends and colleagues, because I was feeling pretty rough just kind of going through the motions of the day, which were exhausting. And then I got a quick note from Philip Ammon about some books that he's about to create for some of his clients. And it was great. Jump on the phone, talk about some ideas, bouncing back and forth. And I feel better. I might not sound better, but I feel better. And it was nice to reconnect. So, uh, yeah. If you haven't yet, pick up the phone and call somebody today that maybe you wouldn't have called otherwise. And then, uh... Have a good one. Hope you're feeling better than I'm feeling. And um, I'll see you tomorrow.